sometimes when I make videos, I feel like I have to like pre-plan what I'm gonna say. I have to kind of like plan out every little minute thing I'm going to say. But this video, I really do feel like I want to say right off the cuff because it is coming immediately straight from my heart. And I want to convey my thoughts, feelings, and emotions unadulterated, not premeditated, but just coming straight from where it is coming from. I'll give a brief content warning on the screen so you know what to expect in this video in terms of heavy topics, but I'm just gonna ramble and just kinda tell you how I feel, just straight up, like 100%. So, I came out as transgender in 2016, and I started hormone replacement therapy on February 25th, 2019, so it's been like over five years now since I began transitioning. And you know, it's one of those things where when you start to think about doing transitioning and, you know, pursuing and learning about what the process is going to be like medically or socially or internally, you get a lot of people pushing back. They're going to say things like, oh, you're going to regret it, you know, and they'll usually vary from either very concerned people in your life who either are just misinformed themselves but have the best intentions to, you know, outright hateful, mean people who just kind of want to see you fail. And in my experience, I don't think one of those two categories of people is better than the other, whether it be the well-intended or the outright hateful. I feel like at the end of the day, you should be the one to make that choice for yourself, not them. Like, you're the one who is making the choice to transition. You're not forcing them to transition. You're choosing for yourself with your own human autonomy as to whether or not you want to pursue hormone replacement therapy, if that's an option you want to pursue as a condition for coming out as transgender. Not all trans people pursue HRT, sometimes through financial or social reasons, but also just because some trans people just don't want to, and that's cool too. But again, that's part of that human autonomy, right? It's that part of that dialogue where you make that choice for yourself. And other people shouldn't be telling you what to do when it comes to making that choice, whether or not you feel that it is right to come out as transgender. So anyway, the reason why I'm talking about this is because for the last five months or so, I really thought about, like, was transitioning worth it? I went through all of this. I made a lot of sacrifices over the years. I lost friends, I gained friends, and because of that, a lot of avenues for networking, like in music or within, you know, social circles have closed off for me, but also at the same time, a lot of new avenues of networking through music and video editing, and content creation and of course making friends have also opened the stores to me so in a way it's kind of interesting how i'm a little privileged in that respect to that i did have a lot of people in my life who were supportive of me just enough to be able to feel safe enough to transition but even in that respect i still wondered was it worth it was all of it worth it? Was taking hormone replacement therapy worth it? Was socially transitioning, presenting myself as femme, presenting myself as a trans woman, presenting myself as non-binary, calling myself Skylar, changing my gender, changing my pronouns, was all of that worth it? And honestly, I can say without hesitation, yeah, it was worth it. And I really want to talk about that. Like, I want to talk about the dark and also the light of it all because there were some dark moments throughout my transition but I also want to say that those dark moments did not come without some wonderful blissfulness of greatness in my life. So in the previous decade I was homeless on and off due to my living situation. I have talked about this occasionally that I've been homeless 
And at the same time while being homeless, I had two jobs. I volunteered at a veterinary clinic and was also going to school to hopefully become a veterinarian. But with the particular task of having to go do all of those things while homeless proved to be so burdensome that I had to drop out and I never got to finish my education as a result of that. So, you know, a lot of mental health issues laid on top of that as well because, you know, I was a college dropout and I wasn't really able to really do much with my life at that point. But also just the fact that like I was kind of going through an identity crisis in like the mid 2010s. Even with all the mounting pressure that is my current condition at the time being homelessness, I had to ask myself, is this the life, the identity, the person in which I wanted to live by? And I said no. So I experimented with another name being Christopher Sabo at the time, as some of you know, for you long-time followers of my content where I did the Christopher Sabo show, I really did go by Christopher for a long time out in the open with, like, my friends, and some people accepted it, and some people didn't, and it was kind of devastating for those who didn't, because some people in particular who I really did care about just kind of ghosted me without, like, saying anything. There's a particular friend of mine who I was really close friends with for a long time and he did not ever respond to me ever again after I came out as Christopher with they them pronouns and I remember being devastated and crying actually it really really broke my heart and as time progressed, you know, I would sometimes get a chance to sleep at some people's houses, like to kind of like have a roof over my head while I'm trying to take care of myself or procure some kind of income or whatnot. But this is where it starts to get dark, right? And there's no sugarcoating it. I started to consume a copious amount of cannabis. Now, I have always smoked cannabis at least since the age of 21 as I'm 32 now and I still smoke cannabis today though I don't smoke nearly as much cannabis now as I have in the previous decade I have definitely chilled out on that but the amount of cannabis that I was smoking back then was absolutely to deal with the mounting trauma that was being homeless that was not having any kind of food security whatsoever and if I'm being quite honest with you, it was also because of the gender dysphoria that wasn't being addressed. And so I didn't really have much of any kind of space to be able to express myself or to express, hey, I feel differently about my gender identity than I do how I present myself right now. And so I just didn't really have that kind of space for that. And it was weird because, like, on the one hand, I was finally having these thoughts where, you know, I was finally questioning the legitimacy of upholding masculine values, upholding masculine, like, importance to my role in society. And I want to be clear, as a non-binary person, I don't think masculinity is bad. I actually think masculinity can be really fucking cool sometimes. But there is a fine line between masculinity and toxic masculinity. And notice how I don't call it positive masculinity, because masculinity as a norm should be celebrated. But also, at the same time, we can't ignore the very real epidemic that is toxic masculinity. The patriarchal expectations of men throughout our society and the mounting pressure of upholding those particular values that really often don't get questioned unless you get called gay or an F slur or something like that. So that was where I was like in the mid 2010s and I started to really have these kinds of dialogues and I remember one of those dialogues I had with myself really had to do with the concept of virginity, right? Which is something that growing up was considered kind of a big deal to just lose your virginity. That if you were a virgin, you're somehow worthless. 
And I just don't embrace that at all. And I think the whole standard is rather arbitrary because I've had sex. Like, I'm not going to lie. And I've had sex definitely more than once. Like, I don't know how many times. I can't say a billion fucking times or anything. But I definitely lost count at some point. So, as a human being, because I lost my virginity, like, ages ago, am I now suddenly like more important am i suddenly more worthy than someone who has never had sex before in their lives no i don't agree with that i think that is absolutely stupid and if you think that and if you have not had sex yet hear from me that is not true again this traces way back to human autonomy okay this has more to do with making choices for yourself in your life like, if you want to have sex, that's your provocative. That's your choice. As long as all of the parties involved are consenting adults. But see, that's where I was at. Is that this is a whole aspect of, like, toxic masculinity in which was being represented in my life around me. So, acting feminine was, in a weird way, uh, a, an act of rebellion. I would go to like Goodwill and buy dresses and I would try them on and see what worked. I took advice from trans women and sometimes trans women would give me some really interesting advice about makeup and about what kinds of clothes to buy. One trans woman told me in particular to explicitly go out and buy basic bitch clothing like booty shorts and tank tops and stuff because you're not always going to be wearing that Hot Topic made outfit non-stop. Like, that's just not realistic. And plus, if you're gonna go buy something like that to wear, like, on a regular basis, you're gonna wanna preserve that for as long as possible. You're gonna wanna wear that really cute dress that you spent a lot of money on, like, when it counts, when it's important. You're gonna want it to be, you know, washed properly, you're gonna want it to not have holes in like four or five years or so, you're gonna want to also be comfortable in everything that you wear, both like in the casual and in the professional. So that's just like one of the many bits of advice that trans women would give me over the years. Anything from like using a pomace stone to like winging the eyeliner on your eyes to look fierce. All of these things I've kind of, you know, picked up and just kind of learned over time. So, you know, fast forward, uh, still homeless, but then I moved across the country and I'm no longer homeless, but I kind of have a space where I can kind of like recover from all of my mental health problems, including my trauma from being homeless for nearly a decade on and off. And this is the first time where like, I actually have my own place that I can live in by myself. I don't have to share this space with anybody. And throughout this time, as I continue to transition, I'm still on HRT, I'm still transitioning and also, in small ways, kind of learning about my gender identity, I come to some really interesting revelations about myself in that I mentioned being really heavy on cannabis a few years prior to making this big move, like back in the early 2015s and all that stuff. But one thing that I noticed when looking back on all of these years was that late 2018 and i'm talking like november and december and maybe a little bit into january of 2019 was that i actually adopted kind of a drinking habit now this is important and i really want to emphasize why this is important to talk about here and that is because i hate alcohol i famously don't like alcohol in fact i'm gonna tell you a little secret about myself. When I was a kid, I would watch the adults in my life engage in drinking and really, really sipping that bottle and engaging in being so sloppy drunk that they would either like humiliate themselves publicly, you know, especially while I'm there and they're supposed to be taking care of me as a kid, 
or they would get involved in like nearly fatal like accidents like car accidents or passing out like in public or something like that and I really hated alcohol growing up I really really genuinely had a strong hatred towards alcohol to the point to where it took me until ironically my mid-twenties to kind of just let go of the fact that yeah sometimes people do just kind of have a beer or two and just kind of relax on the couch or go to a bar or go to a punk show with an angry orchard in their hand and that was when i just yeah i started to develop my own drinking habit but again it was in large part to quell the pain that was the trauma of being homeless and insecure with my food but also it was because I really really hated myself like let's be real here at that point in the mid 2000s where I was experiencing a copious amount of gender dysphoria I absolutely hated myself so much self-hatred that I've made some attempts on my life before so obviously one thing led to another I started developing a drinking habit and again I want to emphasize this is all taking place before HRT before I started taking my transition much more seriously and I remember one day my mother came into the bedroom in which I was staying in just around that time because I had a place to stay for the time being at that point and she saw like a whole line of bottles like wine bottles because I guess like my preferred alcohol at the time was like red wine and I had like a whole line of red wine bottles that were just empty and I was you know drinking them all so she just sat me down and she reminded me of my feelings on alcoholism in my adolescence and just how much I resented it so much and now I've kind of become that so of course while I'm not interested in shaming anybody who does engage in like substance abuse yeah something needed to change and a major change needed to happen and HRT needed to happen so I pursued that and honestly I can't even recall the last time I had a beer and right now as of recording this it is the literal end of July July 31st and it's like 11 23 p.m. and I think the last time I smoked any bit of cannabis was like maybe towards the beginning of July and I'm pretty sure it was to like July 4th because my band and I were having band practice on July 4th and I had gotten a little bit of a doobie before band practice started and so yeah I can absolutely say at least in my case that hormone replacement therapy saved my life it saved me from alcohol addiction and substance abuse and quite frankly I can't believe that this is something that American politicians are trying to restrict our access to and the reduction of substance use within my life isn't the only thing that has been impacted. I have pretty much eliminated self-harm. I don't want to get into specifics as to what kind of self-harm I would engage with, as I also don't want to promote any of it here on this video or the channel, but it's pretty much eliminated. I haven't really engaged in self-harm in like a couple of years. And by extension, I have not engaged in any amount of suicidal ideation or suicidal attempt in a very long time. Like sometimes what I would do back in the day was I would think of ways that maybe I could kill myself quickly, but those thoughts have since diminished to a point to where I don't even have those kinds of thoughts anymore. And the attitude that I have since adopted has dramatically changed. It was definitely a work in progress and it was not like an over the night revelation. It was something I had to really, really fight for over time. 
and the attitude in which I've adopted is that, and I really want people to understand this, I did not transition just to give up. Transitioning for me was a part of growing up. I don't think you finish growing up from your adolescence when you turn 18. I think growing up is an ongoing process. And I'm 32 as of today, and not my birthday or anything, but I'm still growing up. I'm still learning about the world. I'm still learning about myself. I'm still learning about things that I feel are important to me. Just earlier this year, I learned that I really don't like cowards. And I've made episodes of my podcast and I've made even a whole video about why I don't like cowards and why cowardice, I believe, irritates the ever-living hell out of me. And I wouldn't have learned that if I hadn't had the chance to grow up. These are values in which I have learned about, about myself. This is who I am. This is me. This is everything that matters about me. And so, this is why I believe that transitioning was a thousand percent worth it. Like, at least in my case. Now, I want to also emphasize that transitioning is not for everyone. Some people just aren't trans. Some people are cisgender and they're comfortable in the skin in which they exist under. They are okay with being the gender that they were assigned with at birth and that's totally fine. But for me and for millions of other trans people who need access to healthcare, it matters. It does save our lives. I regret nothing. Does the substance abuse that I engaged with in 2015, like, was that stupid? Of course it was. It was stupid, but it was also educational. Like, I felt shitty. I didn't like that. I didn't like abusing substance. I learned and grew from that habit. And I also learned that I didn't really like having no value or sense of self-worth or no self-esteem. I learned that those are things that I don't like having. So I worked on myself and transitioning just happened to be the solution. Now, transitioning is obviously not like a cure-all. I can't really like tell you as an audience member listening to this that yeah it's just transition and your self-esteem will go way the fuck up it's not gonna work like that everybody's lives are different and i just think that that would be irresponsible if i said that but remember what i said at the beginning of the video and actually towards the middle of the video it's all about that human autonomy that you should be able to have the right to be able to make that choice for yourself, to be able to decide if transitioning, whether through medical means or non-medical means, through more social means, is right for you. And so yeah, by that metric, yeah, trans rights are human rights. That is the most important thing at the end of the day. There is no if, ands, or buts. Trans rights are human rights. Being able to medically and safely transition matters immensely. And it's really sad that, you know, I really didn't get the most amount of support when I first came out. But again, these are people whom I would not really want in my life anyway. If these are people who would just outright ghost me and, like, break my heart like that, why would I want them in my life? And if you're going through something like that yourself with maybe like your family or your friends as well, think of it like this. They're asses. They only care about a version of you that appeals to them. And that if you are evolving into somebody who is more true to yourself on the inside, and if it bothers your friend or family, then screw them. Forget about them. They're for the fucking birds. They can go live an unhappy life somewhere else while you're living your best life. I know that embracing this 
it is much easier said than done. Like, let's be real here, this is still gonna require a lot of emotional labor and counseling for yourself. You're gonna have to really advocate for yourself in a lot of these situations as well. Really fight for yourself and have quite a bit of a thick skin for so much that is mounting against all of us right now. Like, I mean, for fucking real. But being able to sleep at night and to be able to be 100% true to yourself, that is a million times worth it. It is so fucking worth it because you can finally establish a sense of belonging in this world as yourself, 100% yourself. And I want to make it clear, just again, I cannot tell you if transitioning for you as the person watching is going to be right for you. But I'm going to tell you that if you have done the research and if you've looked into what it means to medically and socially transition and you feel that that is the path that you want to go down, however you choose to identify in your day-to-day -day life and internally, it is a million times worth it. A thousand percent worth it. A billion times worth it. It is so fucking worth it. It saved my life. Transitioning saved my life. And I hope that that is crystal clear with everybody who is listening. It saved my life. It was the right choice for me. I feel like right now we're seeing a lot of people hyper focus on detransitioners. And, you know, it's really interesting that you get, like, these very far-right groups who, you know, lobby and pay for the detransitioners to, you know, speak on their platforms and, you know, promote hate speech towards trans people. But then you get actual trans people who haven't detransitioned. You got, like, two different camps of these trans people, one of which is, like, your Blair White type who use these, uh detransitioning stories in order to hopefully you know appeal themselves to fascist types so you know when project 2025 probably passes which you know obviously i hope doesn't pass knock on wood that they don't get killed by the fascists like how Ernst strom was playing that bet you know betting that the leopard won't eat their faces and then there are obviously the other trans people who are just trying to raise awareness of the very real issue of conservative think tanks promoting detransitioning through the detransitioner people but i want to be an example of a success story i want to be an example of somebody who did transition and despite my very human flaws that a lot of people can admittedly relate to i'm i'm happy as fuck you know i obviously don't live a perfect life but you know nobody does realistically like the Duggar family they try to present themselves as this quiverful Christian perfect family that can do no wrong that have no moral affliction with anybody or anything that they lead society by example but then in the family, there's Joshua Duggar, who is molesting members of the family and has child porn on his laptop. Why aren't the transphobic, gender-critical, Christian conservative fuckwads going after people like Joshua Duggar instead of trying to restrict trans health care for the rest of us? And if we're being real here, at least puberty blockers delays puberty so that when the child turns 18, they can make that decision for themselves to go through puberty normally or to, you know, pursue hormone replacement therapy. Even the most basic of research will tell you that that is what the procedure really is. There is no excuse for transphobia. Transitioning was absolutely worth it. I totally would recommend it for people who are questioning their gender. Like, without a second thought. Yeah, it's not for everybody. But everybody should have access 
to that very basic, fundamental human right to make that choice for themselves, at the very minimum. Remember, it's all about that human autonomy.